This is Common Core State Standard Support video in mathematics. The standard is 2MD5. This standard dealing with measurement and data states use addition and subtraction within 100 to solve word problems involving lengths that are given in the same units. Example by using drawings such as drawings of a ruler and equations with a symbol for the unknown number to represent the problem. Now what's interesting here is that there is a related standard over in the operations and algebraic thinking strand. Uh, standard one reads, use addition and subtraction within 100 to solve one and two step word problems involving situations of adding to, taking from, putting together, taking apart, and comparing with unknowns in all positions. Example by using drawings and equations with the symbol for the unknown number to represent the problem. Again, notice there is quite a bit of similarity between this standard and the one that we're dealing with in measurement and data, which is really a more specific application of this other standard in the other domain. Now, it's not specifically mentioned, but it's very important that students understand the need for standard units. Let's say you had students measure the length of an object and some students used paper clips, others used crayons, others used some checkers or coins, and some others used spaghetti sticks. And notice that they all got different numbers as far as the length. And of course, the reason being is that the length units were different lengths. So that creates a problem because, you know, some are saying it's a length of four, some are saying it's a length of six, and so forth. So we need the same unit to be used by all students to get the length measurement. And so, of course, here's where the idea of the standard unit of, say, an inch comes in. So you'd want uh, students to have some kind of manipulative uh, that's an inch long, some kind of strip of cardboard or whatever you come up with, and just uh, label it one inch so that the idea starts becoming more familiar to the students that we're dealing with a measurement, a standard unit of one inch. Let's take one more scenario to again instill this idea of the need for standard units. Let's say the question is, well, what's the length of the classroom? And let's say, okay, the teacher is going to be one of the folks that steps off the distance and then deliberately choose the shortest student in the class as the other person to walk off the distance. And let's say that the teacher took 17 steps across the room but the shorter student uh, took 25 steps. Now the unit being used is the same thing, steps, but the teacher's steps are longer than the student's steps, so they did come out with a different number as far as the length. So again, bringing in the idea of a standard unit. And let's say in this case, a ruler, which would be a foot. So again, if students use the rulers to measure the length of the classroom, they should all come up with the same solution instead of something like this situation where you know, one of them was 17 steps and the other length was 25 steps. Again, very important to establish this important idea, the need for standard units. So let's go ahead and investigate uh, some problems, some examples. Here we have a boat and it left its port and it's traveled 23 miles. The port on the other side of the bay is a distance of 67 miles. How much farther does the boat have to go to reach the port across the bay? Well, first, you want students to have some type of visual, you know, some type of picture. Doesn't have to be really elaborate, but just something basic where they can, again, understand the facts and the relationships and the problem. So in this scenario, we've got a situation where we travel 23 miles and the total distance across is 67 miles. It's always a good idea to establish the relationship in plain English. And in this case, we, we had a partial distance and then plus the remaining distance will be the total distance. Once that is established, then it's a lot easier to go ahead and put in our statement that includes the numeric values. So in this case, we had 23 miles plus some unknown distance, the remaining distance, to get a total of 67 miles. Notice that 
we didn't try to force fit the equation or the relationship to match what the operation was going to be. Uh, if, just go with what the logic says and the operation that's going to be used will, be, will, will take care of itself. Let's take a similar scenario. This time a boat left its port and traveled 18 miles. They stopped to watch the whales. Okay, well the whales went away so they decided, okay, well let's keep going. So then they traveled another 27 miles to get to the port on the other side. So how far is it from one port to the other? Again, you want the students to draw some type of physical, visual representation so they, again, can see what the relationships are going to be. And in this case, traveled 18 miles and then another 27 miles. And so our unknown is, well, how many miles total is that? We write uh, our logic statement partial distance plus remaining distance e equals to the total distance. And then we establish the numeric equation, 18 miles plus 27 miles is equal to an unknown number of miles. Then the students can solve the problem and actually do the addition and fill in their solution uh, into this symbol here for the unknown. Let's try a different scenario. Students are pretty familiar with football. In this case, okay, Miguel threw a pass from the 15-yard line to the 39-yard line. How far did he pass the football? Again, very important that the students have uh, some type of visual representation. So in this case, okay, from the 15-yard line to the 39-yard line. And then we fill in the rest of the information, uh, the 15 and the 39. Now the logic here is very important. It's something very common that students will deal with in the future. And that's the basic idea of how to get distance, which typically would be that you would take the starting point and subtract it from the ending point. Uh, again, a very important logic. Uh, need to write that down and, and uh, again, something that students need to become very familiar with. That if I take the ending point and subtract the starting point, that'll give me the distance or the distance traveled. So in this case, now we just fill in the numeric information. We have 39 yards for the ending point minus the 15 yards as far as the starting point for him throwing the pass. And then all we have to do is do the subtraction to get our solution. And again, fill it into the uh, symbol that we use for the unknown. Let's try one more example. When Michelle's family moved into their new home, there was a tree in the backyard that was four feet tall. And then after 15 years, the tree grew nine feet. So what's the new height of the tree? Now, let's focus on this idea after 15 years. And this is in here for a very deliberate reason. Students get accustomed to having problems where whatever numeric values are involved, whatever is given in the problem, those get used in the solution. But when they start experiencing problems where there's extraneous information like we have here, then there's confusion. So doing something like this earlier on starts giving them that experience. But what would really help in this case would be when they do the visual representations and they set up the relationships, their statements, that eliminates that problem. So like here, Okay, here's the original tree was four feet, okay, and then it grew nine feet, so there's that information. So logic says, well, the original height plus the growth would be the new height. So now it's just a matter of filling in our information numerically, uh, four feet plus nine feet. And so now we can see that uh, the solution will come from just adding four feet and nine feet and filling in the information here, which in this case, of course, would be 13 feet. Now, by doing all this, I've eliminated the confusion of what to do with this. And, start, and kids start to realize that, hey, well, that was just extra information. It, yeah, it was nice to know, but it wasn't anything that I had to have in order to solve the problem.